Nor need we confine ourselves to the realm of the mental to call the mecha mechanistic picture into question. It may be that the conception of causality richer than this is already there looking us in the face uh, in th fields like molecular and evolutionary biology. Uh, at least this is where a more diverse causal language these days constantly seems to be attempting to assert itself. I've talked of top-down causation, circular causality, epigenetic information, symbiogenesis, teleonomy, convergent evolution, systems biology, even as a traditional geneticentric neo-Darwinism strives to contain that language within a more linear narrative and fails to do so. And this is not simply on account of the failure of the human genome project to yield the master key to the entire mystery of life from protein folding to my love of Glenn Gould or Ella Fitzgerald. That's what I was hoping they would find. <laughs> life appears to be structurally hierarchical not only because evolution is a cumulative process in which more complex levels are gradually superposed upon lower self-sufficient levels, but because every discrete organism possesses a causal architecture in which there can be no single privileged level of causation. This is sort of the doctrine of systems biology, which again is not a, a mystical doctrine. It's simply a, a rather interesting take on the empirical truths of the life sciences. Inasmuch as each level depends on levels above and below it, and none of these levels can be intelligibly isolated from others as a kind of causal base, as the primordial cause. At least such is the contention, contention say, of Dennis Noble, who's perhaps the subtlest champion of systems biology, or as he now calls it, biological relativity. There was a time, perhaps, when one could innocently think in terms of a master ground or center of life with the DNA molecule as the primordial genetic repository of information, and perhaps it seemed to make sense to understand life in terms of a simple dichotomy between replicators and vehicles the way Richard Dawkins does with those silly robots of his that are, you know, the, 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 the shambling vehicles of the, those clever genes. Now, though, argues Noble, we can scarcely even define a gene, let alone identify genetic explanation of the entirety of living systems, nor can we ignore the degree to which DNA sequences or passive causes also variously informed and given expression as determined by organism and environment. And for Noble, there's a special kind of beauty in the exquisite complexity of organic life. He delights in the interdependent uh, simultaneity of life's functions, the way in which each level at once assembles the components of an immediately lower level while itself constituting a component of an immediately higher. Atoms, molecules, networks, organelles, cells, tissues, organs, holosomatic systems, complete organisms, populations, species, clades, the physical environment. He even daringly enough talks of natural teleology because he, he's sophisticated enough to understand that properly understood this is an intrinsic rational determination within a complex system, not a factitious purpose imposed from without by some deta detached intelligent designer but in larger part because there clearly are levels of explanation at which purpose constitutes not just an illusory epiphenomenon of inherently purposeless material process. It's a real causal power. You can say it's an emergent explanation, but an organ, no matter how stochastic its history was phylogenically, exists within an organism because of the purpose. It serves a part from which it wouldn't exist, and these levels are not reducible to one another, but exist as a totality. Within the hierarchy of relations, there may be discrete levels of organization, but no independent causal functions. The entire structure is a profoundly logical whole. Now, maybe this intentional structure somehow emerges, as I say biochemically, phylogenically, from very primitive causes, which then become ingredients in a recursive system of interactions that were originally random or chaotic and is there st therefore still reducible to a state prior to purpose. But unless we're using the word emergence again as a synonym for miracle or magic, this is the point, we're still obliged to assume that the formal determinations of organic complexity, or as we now call it, their information, which is more obscurantist than helpful, 
are clearly present in those causes in at least latent or virtual form, awaiting explication in developed phenotypes and, and other forms. And so we're obliged to assume that whatever rational relations may exist in or- organisms, including form and finality, are already present in those seemingly random states. That is to say, we need not assume that prior to the complex unity of a living system, some extrinsic design existed within its material substrate like a kind of algorithm programmed by an intelligent desire, but we can't doubt that everything that enters into the structure of a living system is already constituted by those rational causal relations that allow discrete purposive systems to arise. Even if we can't say how life began or how self-replicating organisms became available for natural selection, we can certainly doubt that those higher causal relations are accidental accretions upon some single isolated aspect of their relations. Irreducible emergence is a logical nonsense. Whatever properties appear in an effect, unless imposed adventitiously, are already implicit in its lower causes, even if only in a kind of virtual state. So even matter, if there is such a thing, in its barest constitution already has something of the character of mind. At least logic seems to urge even the materialists in that direction. 